The information discussed in this PillCast episode are merely opinions and do not constitute formal policy or legal guidance of any kind. Hello and welcome to another PillCast, uh, the video blog where we talk about important federal procurements in 10 minutes or less, I guarantee it. I'm Scott Simpson with the DHS Procurement Innovation Lab, and today I'm joined by a very special guest, Mr. Jason Stoner. Jason, welcome and uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Great. Thanks, Scott. I'm excited to be here. I'm the Senior Director of Transformation at MetroStar. We're a digital transformation organization that was founded in 1999 and we're really focused on the intersection of human-centered design and AI and ML. Very cool. Well, today we're here to talk about delays. And so, hey, if we go over 10 minutes, it's just another delay, right? <laughs> we're, we're all familiar with solicitation delays. Like everyone out there in industry has, I mean, it's, it's a running joke now. Uh, today, we're going to talk about how they affect companies like MetroStar and industry. So let's let's start with the most common delay. The government releases a solicitation. They receive dozens, maybe hundreds of questions, and that takes a lot of time to answer. In fact, it takes so much time to answer that the proposal submission due date needs to be extended and pushed to the right. So, Jason, how does that delay impact industry? Certainly. And as you mentioned, this is fairly common. It's pretty much expected or the norm for traditional proposals. But when you get into a coding challenge, there's a larger ripple effect when you have these extensions. Um, for coding challenge, you need senior level subject matter experts from all the respective fields. So DevOps, design, um, AI and ML, you know, anything data related. So these are people that they're not on the bench. They're highly sought after across the organizations. These delays have really three main impacts for the industry. One is the challenge teams, they need to negotiate coordinate availability with managers and the customers these individuals are supporting ahead of time. So then they can be fully dedicated to go after this uh, challenge. As deadlines are extended, there's tension for everybody renegotiating, going back and you know, having those conversations. The second is the infrastructure, the pipelines, the platforms used to create the solutions. Um, they need to remain operational longer. That increases the overhead costs, which can be several hundred dollars per day to do that. If it's a week, two weeks, many thousands of dollars can be involved. And that can make it cost prohibitive um, with direct out-of-pocket expenses to go after these types of opportunities. Then the third is around time off. You know, PTO from um, people within the vendor community, it's planned around going after these opportunities and these challenges. They're highly taxing. People are working long hours, weekends to put really something they're proud of, you know, forward for uh, submission. So we want to give people time off, you know, after that's done to recover, recuperate, before they just jump back into whatever their normal uh, customer, you know, um, problem space is. So when these plans, you know, get extended, it causes, you know, changes to that planned vacation, which has a, a trickle down effect of frustration, you know, that goes along with it. Yeah, those are great points, Jason. I mean, we need to respect people uh, and be respectful of travel plans, everything else. Maybe someone's got a, a trip booked to Disney, right? They should get the, the, the <laughs> chance to go on that vacation, wherever they're going with their family, whatever that is. Um, so that's why, you yeah. know, these things are important. want to start thinking about that, keeping that out there. Um, same thing for, you know, a solicitation that includes, like you said, like that five-day coding challenge or like that uh, a one-week response timeline. But hey, you know, life happens, it's extended now from five days, maybe to seven to 10 to 14. That's got that ripple effect, like you mentioned. I, I've heard that uh, challenges can be really difficult. They're, they're really fun, like in the moment, you're, everyone's kind of hyped up. But <laughs> like you said, like as that marathon keeps going, like the fun decreases and the challenge increases. Uh, I heard Absolutely. One about, maybe you, I don't know if you've had this one, but people sleeping in the conference room so that they can keep going uh, because- mm -hmm. It's a short challenge. And hey, if we know it's going to be five days, that's okay. Maybe you're willing to do that for a couple of days. But if it's 14, 
hey, I'm not sleeping, bringing a sleeping bag for that long. Yep, I want my own bed as part of it. And right. you're right. Um, you know, just you know, real quick with that, um, I've been involved in coding challenges, you know, going way back to um the 18F Agile acquisition, which was one of the first ones. And then we had the HS Flash and it continues. But those early ones, we would um convene and we had a large training room and we would be there for the duration of it because it was time boxed. But wow. to your point, as it got extended, we're like, I need to sleep in my bed. I want to see my family, pet right. my dog, whatever that might be. Yeah. And all of this stuff is really important. It's not just about the impact on people. It's important because if industry is spending both too much time and too much money on your solicitation, they may be less likely to respond, which means you may not receive adequate competition. And that means you may not get the best result. And at the end of the day, that's one of the most important things is making sure mission needs are met. In fact, it's one of the pill's stated goals is to increase the likelihood of successful mission outcome. So let's talk about two things government can do for your next procurement to help avoid delay. First thing, consider releasing a draft solicitation. That allows industry to ask questions beforehand, to allow you to answer questions that you want to beforehand, and that should get the bulk of the questions and answers done before the solicitation is released. So that takes away one aspect of a delay. No extensions required because questions and answers are done, submission due date can stay the same. Now, one tip for that is when you release the draft solicitation, make sure that you let industry know this is for a potential solicitation that is forthcoming soon. This isn't just a pie in the sky, hey, maybe I will, maybe I won't. No, this is coming out. We expect this to come out in the next few weeks. That way industry knows, hey, I need to put my time into this. Second thing, consider including a draft schedule in your solicitation for the entire timeline, from solicitation to release, all the way to award, including everything in between. And keep industry informed if those days change. Jason, last week you told me that uh, having that information really helps you prepare. Yeah, 100%. The more accurate that information is, the better we can plan and be prepared for it. Um, we're able to negotiate to get the best team in place to be able to go after the opportunity. So um, yeah, that's providing the government with the right people based on what their needs are um, to help move their mission forward as part of it. We're able to accurately estimate the overhead costs associated with not just people, but the technology to go after um, the coding challenges. So that helps us plan out what, you know, what is realistic for us. You know, if you're a small business starting out, then you need to be much more uh, judicious, you know, with your budget and, you know, what that is, you know, versus, you know, some of the larger accounts or larger organizations, but you still need to make and maximize the best use of your uh, B and D, um, you know, dollars as part of it. Yeah. yeah, I mentioned aligning realistic key personnel. Um, that way, you know, when we're submitting key personnel resumes, it's a more accurate reflection going into it that these are the people that we've paved the way to be able to support the customer. And there's not, um, you know, swapping people out sooner than expected and reduces that frustration, you know, on both sides of it. Um, you know, and all of that, you know, provides the government with a higher caliber trusted partner based on having qualified vendors and people to really move that mission forward. Hey, Jason, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been a great conversation. Absolutely. I appreciate you having me on the show and look forward to seeing this when it comes out. All right. And if you like this video, remember to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel to get all our latest updates. And if there are other ways that delays impact you, Drop a comment below, let us know so we can have that conversation, keep them going, and hey, maybe you'll be featured on a next future Pillcast podcast. Well, thanks and see you next time.